Number 10, Rogue. Yep, a few different X-Men found themselves gender swapped in this alternate story out of 2000's issue of X-Men Millennial Visions. One story in the comic is called The Big X Change, not to be confused with The Big Exchange. In this story, Rogue is one of the X-Men who finds herself transformed into himself following exposure to Blanco rays, which combined with the mutant's unpredictable X-Factor results in Rogue's gender becoming reversed. In this alternate reality, Rogue was never able to reverse the effects of the Blanco Ray emitter and so remains a hot male version of herself. Not going to lie, I think either way Rogue looks really great. I also love that this version of Rogue still has the jacket. Everyone looks good in that jacket. Number 9. Green Lantern. The Green Lantern of Earth-11 is known as Kylie Rayner and is a straight-up gender-swapped version of Green Lantern Kyle Rayner. What's so cool about Earth-11 is everything pretty much mirrors DC's main continuity save for the characters' genders, which are all reversed. This includes the superhero's costumes. Just like her male counterpart, Kylie Rayner also wears a full Green Lantern bodysuit with the mask. It's kind of refreshing to see that all that changes is the gender of the characters, but the outfits in the instance of Earth-11 swaps for the most part just stay exactly the same. There's also a Wonder Man on Earth-11, which I kind of love. Number 8, Lady Thor. The awesome thing about gender-bent characters is they all come in all kinds of forms. For Lady Thor, it's a female version of a generally male superhero identity, who this time around is simply a female character in that role. Lady Thor is Jane Foster. She first became Lady Thor in a What If comic that was later made canon. After Thor was deemed unworthy to wield Mjolnir following the events of Original Sin, a new female version of Mighty Thor appeared, who is later revealed to be Jane. The dramatic twist was that Jane was suffering from cancer at the time, and because the transformation to the Goddess of Thunder purged all toxins from Jane's body, including her chemo treatments, she was actually kind of dying as a result of her new role. Regardless of the consequences, though, Jane refused to give up her heroic calling. Number 7, Wiccan. Wiccan is his own character and a member of the Young Avengers, but he is basically like the male version of Scarlet Witch, or as close as we'll get anyways. Wiccan is basically a combination of Scarlet Witch and Thor in terms of likeness and abilities. He also was at one point Scarlet Witch's fictional son, Billy, and because her children, Billy and Tommy, never really existed, he's also not that. It's very confusing, but for a time, he was considered to be her reincarnated son, who didn't exist, despite existing separate from Wanda and having his own different parents. Anyways, now that's not part of the canon, I believe, so it's confusing when you have imaginary children. Number six, Lady Punisher. Lady Punisher is Lynn Michaels, a former cop turned vigilante after she decided to take the law into her own hands. Lynn felt like the system was broken and corrupt, so decided to go out on her own. She was in pursuit of a criminal who had escaped justice when she ran into the Punisher. Lynn developed some romantic feelings towards Frank, but he never seemed to reciprocate them, and it was for this reason that she ended up going out on her own. Like Frank Castle, she has a thing for black leather and skulls. Number 5, Ironheart. Another lady who stepped into what was originally a mantle belonging to a man was Riri Williams. Riri was a child genius who ended up becoming the new Iron Man and actually was mentored by an AI of Tony Stark himself. She ended up standing in for Tony, taking up the mantle Ironheart while he was in a coma following the events of the Second Civil War. Riri herself had actually been on his side in the war and worked to help Stark during its events and during the fight against Captain Marvel. When Tony eventually returned and woke up from his coma, she ended up fighting alongside her teammates on the champions for a while. Number four, Nicole Fury. A lot of fans have made their own alternate versions of Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. There is no limit to gender bent cosplays and fan art, and while there are tons of different artistic depictions of what a female Nick Fury might look like and various different outfit designs, there is even a female version of Nick Fury from the Marvel Universe. She comes from the alternate Earth of 81114, where she is the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., like her male 616 counterpart, and has bright red hair. Not going to lie, I actually prefer some of the fan art when it comes to this gender bend, but it's still cool to know that Marvel even already has a gender bent version of Nick themselves. Number three, King of Cats. Maybe one of my favorite gender bends of all time. Carl Kyle is basically the male version of Catwoman. While he isn't a hero initially like Catwoman becomes and pretty much only acts like a criminal, he does end up being reformed. And at this point, I think most of us consider Catwoman more of a hero than a villain. So I figured it would still be appropriate in that regard to mention Carl here because 
the other version of him, is definitely, I think, a hero, more a hero at this point. He first appeared in Batman issue 69 in 1952, originally due to his feline and Catwoman-like style of crimes and the fact that he sent Selina flowers, Batman thought that Catwoman might be involved in the crimes and perhaps even the two were in love, but later found out that she had no part in the King of Cats crimes. Batman tried to recruit her to help him and Robin catch the King of Cats, but she refused because as we later find out, Carl Kyle is actually her brother. Carl eventually is captured by Batman after Catwoman saves them both from some hungry zoo tigers, not kidding here, and Carl surrenders and agrees to serve his time and reform his criminal ways, which he actually stays true to, eventually getting off on parole, but never returning to a life of villainy, and instead becoming an ally to superheroes like his sister had. Number 2, X-23. Wolverine has had a few female versions of him pop up over the years, but while Laura is often seen in a way as his genetic daughter, she is also in a sense kind of his genetic twin, or sort of like a genetic clone. Well, she's almost a clone. She wasn't made exclusively out of Wolverine's DNA alone, of course, so she isn't a direct female copy of him, but Laura Kinney, or X-23 as she is known, has herself been known as Wolverine, adopting the mantle for herself for a time. She also shares Wolverine's bluntness and aggression when it comes to her personality. There is something animalistic about her, but despite her being like a female version of everyone's favorite mutant, she has also very much come into her own. In fact, while many people love Logan, there are some who even prefer Laura Kinney's Wolverine to his. Number one. Gwenpool. When talking about female versions of the anti-hero Deadpool, we could talk about Lady Deadpool and make her the priority. But why do that when we could just as easily talk about the awesomeness that is Gwenpool? Gwenpool is from an alternate Marvel universe where she is her world's Deadpool, or more specifically, her world's combo of Deadpool and Spider-Man's girlfriend, Gwen Stacy. She originally comes from a reality like our own, where comics are a thing, and they are filled with superheroes and supervillains. Gwen decides to become a costumed vigilante all her own, as opposed to settling for just being the extra or bystander that she is in a comic book world. Like Deadpool, Gwenpool also seems to have some pretty interesting self-awareness when it comes to the inner workings of the comic book world and her place in it, even at one point willing herself through awareness to become a mutant. Number 10, Iron Spider. Remember when MJ got her chance at bending the gender of the Spider-Man role? Who could forget with that stunning cover by Alex Ross featuring Mary Jane in the Iron Spider suit. That's right, this happened in issue 15 of the 2015 Amazing Spider-Man series. What's more in this issue, Mary Jane reminds us that this hasn't been her first brush with Spider-Man like heroics, and that she even wore the old school Iron Man armor once. Pretty neat. When Iron Man and Spider-Man are both in a bind struggling to fight against the super armored villain Regent, it's time for MJ as Iron Spider to come in and help save the day. Maybe one of my favorite MJ moments. Number nine, Storm. On part one of this list, I talked about a gender-bent version of Rogue, and this gender-bent version of Storm has the same origins. Both are from the comic X-Men Millennial Visions 2000, which consists of a bunch of short, futuristic X-Men stories. One of these stories is called The Big Exchange, and tells the story of how the X-Men team got their genders bent following a run-in with some Blanco rays, which due to the unpredictable factor of their mutant genes, did the unexpected and reversed their genders, as opposed to doing any lethal damage to them. They were never able to reverse their genders, and so the Storm and Rogue of Earth-1007 are now male instead of female. Number 8, Rescue. Well, Pepper Potts is not the female version of Tony, because that would be kind of weird considering she's also been a main love interest for him. She has become a hero in the comics in her own right. And when she dons her armor, which Tony designed for her as rescue in the comics, you have to admit she basically looks like a female Tony Stark. Not only does she have that Iron Man look, but she is given rescue after becoming the victim of a terrorist attack. And in order for Tony to save her life following that incident, Stark ended up being forced to put a powerful magnet in her chest, which bore a strong resemblance to the reactor he has, and making Pepper also part tech in a way, like Tony. Like Tony as well, that piece of technology that is tied to Pepper's survival has also seen many upgrades. Number 7, Psylocke. This alternate version comes to us from Earth 59222. Here, Psylocke appears as a male version of herself, something I'm sure the Earth 616 version of Psylocke would be delighted by. Male Psylocke appears in issue 
462 of Uncanny X-Men. And later on, while in the white hot room, Betsy expresses joy at getting to see all her different alternates. She considers them to, I think, be interesting and fun, and I'm sure this male version would be no exception, assuming it's also one that she's aware of. It's not really in the lineup in that panel, but it's in the comic, so I'm assuming she's aware of it. Number six, Captain Marvel. It's crazy to think that Carol Danvers kind of became a gender-bent version of the original Captain Marvel without really ever meaning to. Of course, Carol is her own character, but both her and Captain Marvel bear a striking resemblance to one another. Their outfits even sometimes mirror one another's. I mean, the whole reason she took up the mantle of Captain Marvel was to honor the fallen hero who she looked up to. Carol Danvers has, of course, made the role her very own and is very different from the original Marvel, but still in a way she became more a gender bent version of him when she adopted his mantle. And to be honest, even when she was Miss Marvel, she was kind of like his female counterpart in the comics in terms of name and look, especially in her original costume. Number five, Wondrous Man. Dane of Elysium is an alternate version of Wonder Woman from Earth 11. Of course, instead of being a woman, he is a man. He is an Amazon prince who actually ended up being banished from Woman's World after he ended up killing instead of just subduing Maxine Lord, this Earth's version of Maxwell Lord. Bad wondrous man. As a result, Dane ended up leading his Amazons in battle against the United States of America and the Justice League. Needless to say, they were none too pleased. They were like, you shouldn't kill people, and then we won't all have to punch each other. Number four, Hellgirl. While this gender bend never happened in the comics, Hellboy is such a popular hero that many fans have decided to put their own spin on the character. Not only is there tons of amazing fan art to give us a glimpse into what a female version of Hellboy, who I suppose we'd call Hellgirl, might look like, but there is also tons of cosplay as well that has been inspired by the idea. I gotta say, I kinda like the idea of it, and I think it would be cool if we saw a story where we got a glimpse to an alternate reality gender bent version of the BPRD squad, or even just had a story where some magic maybe caused Hellboy's gender to be reversed for, you know, just like the length of an adventure. I just think it'd be pretty neat. Number three, Fiona and Cake. Not only do Fiona and Cake show up as a superhero duo in the animated series Adventure Time, but if you are a fan of the gender bent versions of Finn and Jake, they also have their own little comic mini series published by Boom Comics. Fiona and Cake originate from the Ice King's fan fiction reality, but despite everyone in the world of Adventure Time thinking it's mostly terrible, they are two pretty awesome female versions of Adventure Time's main hero buds. In fact, Adventure Time's Rule 63 alternate world as a whole is kind of one of the best that's out there. Am I the only one that thinks that? I think their alternate gender bent world is great. Number two, Spider Woman. Depending on which story you are reading, Jessica Drew is a clone of Peter Parker. Well, she has a few backstories. But the Jessica Drew of Earth 1610 is a clone of Peter Parker, at least. As such, in that reality, she is literally the female version of Spider-Man. In the continuity of Earth 1610, Jessica was part of the clone saga story arc from that reality. I guess writers felt it might be cool to add her in in this way and explore the idea of Jessica as a female version of Peter. Because, you know, in the clone saga, we didn't really have that, necessarily. I think we had Gwen Stacy, though. I think Gwen Stacy comes back as part of that, but she's not like a female Peter. Jessica Drew even came into existence with Peter's memories in her head. That's super clone-esque. How do you clone someone and make sure that the memories they've had are in their head? How does that work, science-wise? Number one, Iron Woman. On Earth 3490, there was no civil war because in this reality, Tony Stark was born a woman and ended up falling in love and marrying her fellow Avenger, Steve Rogers, Captain America. This version of Iron Man is, of course, known as Iron Woman and is named Natasha instead of Tony Stark. One of the ultimate gender bends, really, as it allows these two characters to finally deal with well, would likely causes some of the tension between them even in the main continuity of Earth 616. Also goes to show that there is apparently no problem that love can't solve. Number 10, Lady Flash. The original Lady Flash in the comics was a super powered Russian soldier, part of a speed group known as Blue Trinity. Her name was Ivana Kristina Borodin Molotova. She originally appeared in the New Earth continuity in the Flash series as a villain, but has since popped up again in the comics in the Prime Earth continuity with a different design for costume and appearance. However, the original Christina did actually proclaim herself Lady Flash, working with Vandal Savage against Wally West, 
and even dressing as the Flash for a time. She was both a female counterpart and a villain to Wally, and in the end, it cost her her life. Except that now she's back in Prime Earth, but anyways. Number 9. Nightcrawler. Once more, we return to the issue of X Men Millennial Visions, an issue filled with short stories and pictures to help paint a collection of alternate worlds. One such world is classified as the alternate Earth of 1007 and comes to us from the short story The Big X Change. In this story, the X Men all had their genders swapped thanks to a weapon known as the Blanco Ray, which, when used on them due to the unpredictable factor of their mutant X gene, caused them to swap genders as opposed to harming them as it was expected. To do. As a result, one alternate we got from this event was a gender swapped Kurt Wagner, which is a female version of Kurt. The X Men of Earth 1007 were apparently never able to reverse the effects of the Blanco Ray and instead simply came to accept their change of gender as permanent. So there we have a female Nightcrawler. Number 8 Diamond Patch This alternate of Emma Frost is not just an alternate of the single character of Emma, but was combined with Wolverine to give us this gender bent version of Emma with a bit of a Wolverine twist. Diamond Patch came into existence when Gamora folded the universe in half, bonding each soul to another to create new characters and resulting in the creation of the pocket dimension known as Warp World. Diamond Patch has Emma's aesthetic and light blonde hair and bright blue eyes, but has Logan's facial features and form as a man. Diamond Patch also wields claws like Logan, but they appear to be made out of the hard diamond metal material belonging to Emma's diamond form. They also share a name with Emma, also having the last name of Frost. Number 7 Superwoman There have been quite a few female alternate versions of Superman over the years, and the name Superwoman has been used by various different characters. But for this entry, I'd like to talk about the short lived but often revisited version that is Lois Lane. Is Superwoman. Oddly enough, with both Lois and Clark having dark hair, it means that Lois makes a pretty spot on female version of the superhero. This alternate first appeared in Action Comics issue number 60 in the Superman story entitled Lois Lane Superwoman. In this story, Lois Lane becomes the superpowered hero known as Superwoman after receiving a blood transfusion from Superman, but it turns out it was all just a dream, at least this time around. Alas. Number 6 Angel. Another X Men that underwent Went the big exchange along with Kurt, whom we spoke of earlier, Angel. And I'm not going to lie, Warren Worthington the Third looks pretty good either way. I think in Millennial Vision we get to see what Angel would look like as a woman, flying around with long, thick blonde tresses and those giant white feathered wings. I'm not sure about that pose though. Looks a little awkward, like most female counterpart poses, I guess. Most female character poses. Why do females always get the awkward poses? Number 5, Lady Deadpool. Deadpool is an alternate version of Deadpool from the alternate reality of Earth 3010. Like her Earth 616 counterpart, she also has a regenerative healing factor. Her last name is also Wilson, but her first name is Wanda. Like Wade, many of her fellow teammates have often found her annoying, as also like Wade, she's pretty crazy. She is recruited by Deadpool to join his Deadpool core and to help him defeat the evil Deadpool core, comprised of villainous Deadpool alternates. Number 4, Batwoman. Instead of talking about one of my my faves Cat Kane this time around, we are using the Batwoman mantle to refer to the original Batwoman, Kathy Kane. Kathy Kane was moved to Earth 1 to make room for Kate, but before Kate Kane was on the scene, Batwoman was not related to Batman. Instead, in this version, she was a wealthy heiress as well as an acrobat and a stunt motorcyclist who was infatuated with Batman and as such aimed to be more like the hero. Hence, she basically became his female counterpart and a potential love interest for the caped crusader during the silver age when she first appeared. Though the romance tended to be pretty one sided between her and Batman, with her mostly just having the hots for him. Kathy Kane first appeared in Detective Comics issue 233 in the 50s. The 1950s. In case you're watching this in the future. Number 3 Strange. 2099 AD has their own Sorcerer Supreme known as Strange, except instead she is known as Sorceress Supreme. She goes by the alias Strange or sometimes Mademoiselle Strange, but her real name is Jeannie. Strange was interested in the mystical arts and attempted to use her skills to create an illusion of a monster to protect her brother when they were both being attacked by a gang known as the Skulls. Unfortunately, her magic was so great that instead of simply creating an illusion, she summoned the real thing. 
The monster killed her brother whom she had loved very much and this only drove Strange to want to master and hone her skills more, learning how to better control them. Number 2 Wildfire Ryander is basically a character who helps us to imagine what Starfire would look like were she a man. We know this because he is her brother, so basically her male counterpart genetically. Ryander is brother to of course both Starfire and her sister Blackfire and he looks a lot like Cory. and also being from Tamaran has similar powers to his sister. He first appeared in Tales of the New Teen Titans issue number 4 in the 1980s, where he sported a very different look in comparison to his more modern version who recently popped back up in the Prime Earth continuity just over a year ago. Number 1 Nightwing Cheyenne Fremont was her own character but was also inspired by Dick Grayson to become the female counterpart to his superhero role of Nightwing. She and Dick had a brief romantic relationship and during their time together it was revealed to Dick that Cheyenne was actually a metahuman with psionic powers and it was revealed to Cheyenne that Dick was the hero Nightwing. Dick Grayson encouraged Cheyenne to use her powers for good and become a superhero like him. At first Cheyenne refused but eventually she did follow in Nightwing's footsteps teaming up with him and becoming his female superhero counterpart for a brief time. Her character design has likely helped to inspire gender bent female cosplay versions of Nightwing around the world. I personally love female Nightwing cosplays so I also love Cheyenne's look. Number 10 Joanna Constantine Joanna Constantine is actually the relative of John Constantine but despite her being his ancestor and not a one for one gender swapped version, she also happens to embody a lot of her descendants personality traits. She is somewhat reckless, quick witted and snarky and definitely has a bit of a bad girl streak. Definitely more of an anti hero or neutral figure than a more direct goody goody type just like Constantine himself. She ends up helping Dream to recover the living head of his son Orpheus and get it to safety during the dangerous time of the French Revolution, almost losing her own head in the process. Like John Constantine, she also seems to have ties to the occult and a certain knack for manipulating other people, be they human or more supernatural in origin. Number 9 Mayday Parker Spider Girl, aka May Parker, actually first appeared in a What If One Shot story where she was introduced as Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson's daughter, who of course has taken after her father, becoming a masked spider themed vigilante. She discovered she too possessed her father's spider like abilities and attempted to use them for good, becoming a hero as her father was before her. While she is Peter Parker's daughter from the alternate Earth of 982 and not an exact gender swapped version of the actual Peter. Peter, Spider Girl or Spider Woman does look like an exact gender swapped version of Teenage Peter, just in the way she is drawn, down to her brown hair, which she usually keeps short. Also, made it so cute. Number 8 Dare or Dare the Terminator as she is sometimes known. Dare is the female version of both Daredevil from Marvel Comics and Deathstroke from DC Comics combined. She of course appeared in Amalgam Comics, a fun line that allowed the two worlds of both the big two to be combined to create new characters by taking inspiration from both. Dare's real name is Slade Murdoch. She was a blind mercenary who got her name because of all the dares that she took. She was so feared and respected that few chose to challenge her. Dare was later kidnapped by Enigma Fisk and forcibly given surgical horn implants to make her resemble more of a daredevil. Like Matthew Murdock, she was also blind, but also like Slade Wilson, wore an eye patch. As despite being blind, she had also physically lost an eye, as her DC counterpart Deathstroke also has. Number 7 John Gray, also known as Sunspot actually, but despite his hero code name, this alternate hero from the New Exiles was actually a gender bent version of Jean Gray. John had similar powers to Jean and had her bright red hair. He was also joined on the Force X team of Mostly Mutants by a gender bent version of Cyclops and Iceman and alternate versions of Beast and Spider Man. Number 6 The Flash This alternate version of The Flash comes to us from the 31st century. She was part of the Justice League 3000, a group of heroes who have powers similar to their 21st century counterparts. Also most of them are clones of those counterparts. Terry Magnus is a version of The Flash. She had a twin brother who is also named Terry. He betrayed his sister revealing himself to be the leader of a criminal organization known as The Five and killed her. However, when she was later resurrected in secret by Ariel Masters, Terry's DNA was combined with that of the Flash, meaning that when she returned, she had the Flash's powers. She used these powers to defeat her villainous brother and then joined up with the League herself, wielding her speed force abilities. She even ended up dating the Superman of the team, who of course was a clone of the original. 
Number 5. Variant Scarlett Taylor was converted to a cyborg in a very similar way to her male counterpart, Cyborg, aka Victor Stone. She was a military soldier who survived a massive explosion in Baghdad, suffering life threatening injuries as a result. A man who appeared to be Silas Stone, Victor's father, encouraged his son to help him and his team at Star Labs to use the mother box to save Scarlett's life by turning her into a cyborg as they had with Victor. Reluctantly, Victor agreed, and Variant was born as Scarlett Taylor was transformed into a female cyborg. She would later appear in a few issues in the 2016 Cyborg series. Number 4. She Venom She Venom was a version of Venom that came to be after the symbiote bonded to Eddie Brock's ex-wife Anne Wying. After the symbiote bonded to Eddie Brock's ex-wife Anne Wang. And would not have let the symbiote bond to her as she initially blamed the creature for turning Eddie into what she saw as a monster. However, when her life was at stake after she was attacked by the Sin Eater who shot her, she eventually agreed to bond with both the symbiote and Eddie so that they could save her life. The partial bond, however, wasn't enough, and the symbiote was forced to fully bond to Anne in order to save, leaving Eddie temporarily. This resulted in Eddie being left alone to defend both Venom and Anne when thugs came upon the group and attacked them. That is, until Anne awoke as she Venom, threatening the thugs herself and eventually violently attacking them when they refused to leave. We have also seen a glimpse at what a version of anti-Venom could look like via an alternate cover for the first issue from Edge of Venomverse, which is something you may have noticed in our thumbnail. Number 3. Black Panther Female Black Panther isn't an exact female duplicate of Black Panther. Instead, this gender bend more applies to the role of Black Panther, the heroic role. For quite a while in the comics, Shuri took her brother T'Challa's place and as ruling monarch in Wakanda, becoming Wakanda's queen and hero. Shuri had always aspired to become the first female Black Panther in Wakanda's history, and T'Challa himself helped to train her in case such a day ever came that she would be called upon to take his place. This would happen when T'Challa fell into a coma following a battle. Despite wanting to become Black Panther again after he had recovered and emerged from his coma, T'Challa was called upon to become the King of the Dead instead and rule the underworld, which meant Shuri was left to continue in her reign as Queen and in her role as Black Panther for some time. Although Black Panther would of course become King again and become Black Panther again. In fact at one point there was both of them were Black Panther. Two Black Panthers is better than one. Number 2. Sylvester Kyle On Earth 11, there is also a male version of everyone's favorite feline, sometimes hero, sometimes villain, sometimes neutral party, Catwoman. This alternate version of Catwoman is a man known as Sylvester Kyle. Kyle was the lover of the female version of Batman on Earth 11, Bryce Wayne. Unfortunately, Sylvester didn't live too long in the comics, dying in the first issue that he appeared in. His death broke Bryce, turning her insane and causing her to become one of the Dark Knights known as the Drowned, taking on the position of Aquaman on the team of alternate and evil bat folk. Number 1. Ricky Barnes Rebecca Barnes is the female version of Bucky Barnes. The cool thing is, she isn't even really from a parallel reality. Ricky is also of Earth 616, but was created by Franklin Richards when he saved everyone from Onslaught by creating a pocket dimension. Ricky was one of the heroes created in that dimension. Both her parents were friends and colleagues of Captain America during World War II. And Cap even still had his sidekick Bucky in this reality, who was his own person. So it's kind of like we had two Buckys in the Heroes Reborn reality. We have Male Bucky and we have Ricky Barnes.